Welcome to the Purposed Marriage Podcast. If you're in a marriage that is damaged or broken and think all hope is lost, we invite you to listen in to today's broadcast. We pray that through this ministry, you'll find biblical encouragement and instruction that will lead you and your spouse to a closer walk with the Lord and each other. God can and does heal marriages no matter how desperate or impossible the circumstances may appear to be. And now, here is today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Purposed Marriage Podcast. I'm your host, Tom Larson. With me, as always, is my wife, Amy Larson. Amy, say hello. Hello. Well, here it is, the very end of July, and we, we just made it, Amy. Barely. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we said at the beginning of the year we were going to do a podcast each month, and let's see, we have today and tomorrow, so and we normally don't do anything work-wise on, on Sunday, so it had to be today. So uh, here we are. We're, we're coming to you all right now, and we think this is going to be a really good show. I sort of kidded with Amy that we should just call this episode the, what did I say? The, the verse episode. The Bible verse The Bible episode. verse episode, <laughs> because there's so much scripture we're going to pack into this one, but it's all good. So uh, Amy, go ahead and share what we've been up to the past month. Some, some things have changed. They've gotten more uh, intense, at yes. least on the house, <laughs> oh, house front. A whole lot more intense. Yeah, we are in the final stages of the house. We got the cabinets in. Yesterday was our appliance delivery. And Monday we have the countertop measurements. So I pretty much spend every single day at some point at the house um, talking to people and getting things done there. Uh, also, the boys went back to school. Hey, I was going to mention that. Oh, sorry. Now I have. <laughs> I stole your I thunder. I don't have much left to say. <laughs> yeah. Well, you started back um, with with all of the teachers and and students, but our our children go. Well, it's considered what a, a modified year round. School? Modified year round. And we are one of the first, if well, well we are the, the we first. are we are the first. Our school system is the first to come back to school for yes. the fall twenty two school year. In fact, this was uh, I didn't even realize we were the first until a couple of years ago after we returned from COVID. And actually, I think it was last year they did a big story well, on it. Yeah, all the national news networks were out here interviewing folks from our district and. Uh, trying to find out how we were going to handle the reopening. Uh, very interesting, yes, how that all played out. Yeah, I didn't realize we were the first either until, yeah, the very first. <laughs> until that happened. Yeah. Uh, so we're sort of getting back into the swing of things, a, a normal, normal structured routine. Uh, in the summer months, it's a little more, we have a little more flexibility in terms of what and what we do and when we do it. Uh, and but sort of structure is good. I think it's time the children were back in school, and even though initially they didn't really want to go back, I think they're they're enjoying it. Yeah, they they point. really do like school, and I mean they enjoy getting to see their friends on a daily basis. So. Mm. Well, today's show: how to survive the pain of divorce. We chose this topic for today's episode because of the sheer volume of correspondence we received that is focused on the pain and suffering of the individual standing for marriage. And having experienced the pain of fighting against divorce and enduring the consequences of resisting Satan's call to give up on the marriage covenant, I can say that the suffering is is very real. But the good news is that we are not alone in this suffering. Jesus is ready, willing, and able to help us heal and even thrive in the midst of all the hurt and pain. Our theme verse today is 1 Peter 4, 12 through 13. Amy, I'm going to have you read that for me, please. Okay, it says, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as much as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice 
and be glad when his glory is revealed. All right, so for purposes of clarity, we're going to ask a few questions here about this passage. First off, what does a fiery trial look like, Amy, in the context of uh, divorce or separation? Well, I mean, I think that, you know, Satan wants to see the family destroyed. And so anything that he can do to cause destruction in the family is definitely what a fiery trial looked like. Um, a prodigal turning away, uh, you know, ch- even, you know, I think sometimes you'll see children acting out um, when they're going through a struggle where the parents are separated or divorced. Um you know, separation, um, just, uh, I mean, pain, where it seems like that there's just complete suffering over and over and over. Yeah, well, you know what comes to my mind with this word fiery is destruction. Yeah. You you visualize that, you think of a forest fire, or especially out in the the West when they have these massive fires that Mm -hmm. destroy... You know, all tons of acreage, lots of acreage, mm-hmm. right? And it's it's completely destructive. There's nothing; nothing is left. The life is destroyed. Uh, and so, basically, you know, this this is what happens when someone is going through divorce. Their entire life is upended. Uh, they lose their spouse. In some cases, they're losing their children, losing their homes, their, their financial finances. security, mm-hmm. right? Uh, friends, family. I mean, basically... Everything, really. E- everything. Yeah, the, everything that we normally cling to in this life. And I say that because we haven't lost everything, have we? Yeah. Even when we're going through these trials. All right, so uh, the next question we want to ask here is, what is the, what is the purpose of these fiery trials? Because this, this passage reveals that in, in the first part there. What does it say there, Amy? Do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. To test you, right? So, what is the purpose of the fiery trial? Yeah, I think There's a reason for this coming into your life, right? I mean, to test you, but I think you know to explain that even a little bit more further is to grow you closer to the Lord, so we are completely dependent upon Him, um, and. I mean, really, a a testing of your faith. Where are you going to turn? Who are you going to go to? Which direction are you going to head? Are you going to turn to Christ? Or or are you going to double down on sin and your flesh? Right. That's Those are the options there in front of us. You basically have two options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should we be surprised when a fiery trial comes into our life? Well, based on the scripture, absolutely not. I mean... It says, you know, don't be surprised by this and really kind of even to, you know, be prepared and expect it. And I think that's part of, you know, all throughout scripture, at least in our church, we really try to highlight the armor of God and protecting yourself, um, you know, your shield and the breastplate and like all of the parts of the armor you don't want to have a chink in that because you do, and that's where you have, you know, you see Satan kind of coming in and trying to take over. Um, so, yeah, don't don't be surprised. Kind of expect this and be fully armored so you know how to fight the battles. Continuing with this passage, but rejoice insofar as you share Christ's sufferings. So how do we find commonality between Christ's suffering and the suffering, uh, I'm sorry, how do we find commonality between our suffering and the suffering Jesus endured on the cross? Because, you know, we're saying, some might argue, well, this is a different kind of suffering. But, you know, I would say if you're standing for your marriage, you are aligning yourself uh, with the kingdom of God And with Christ, you are standing for truth. Jesus died on the cross because of truth. He was conquering sin and death. 
He is the way, the truth, and the life. And so I, I draw that similarity there. What do you think, Amy? Yeah, I mean, I, I think... In terms of the physical and, and emotional suffering yeah, the, the, that we're having to endure. The physical pain mm-hmm. and the suffering, I think you can very much um, see similarities. And I think also with you, when when you went through this and later explained everything that you were going through, just just physically how emotionally draining and tiring and, you know, constantly turning to the Lord and saying, give me strength, give me clarity of mind, because you have that brain fog, you know, when you, when you go through I mean, I normally like have, that's my default <laughs> state of mind, to have the brain fog, but even more so, even more so, more when, so you went through when going through that. Yeah, yeah sure. I remember, you know, <laughs> just, just to kind of give um, an example of this and, and also just, you know, to look back on, uh, how ungracious I was, uh, when we were going through this, I remember there was one particular time where the boys, I think, I think it was something to do with school and Tommy was, I think maybe it was insurance coverage and Tommy was having to give the boys dates of birth and this was right in the midst of just the heart. I mean, we were in the heart of this, and he was having a really hard time, and I was not at all. Still shell-shocked, still confused, yeah. bewildered. And kind of in the beginning stages. And I remember he sent me a message and said, Hey, I'm filling out this information for the boys, um, and are these their birthday, like, is this information correct? And my response was, you don't even know when our son's birthdays are. What kind of father are you? And I mean, it was just, it was so calloused and so cold. And, and I didn't consider at all, you know, that you were struggling and that you were suffering and hurting. Um, and he wasn't sleeping well at night, and he w- he certainly wasn't sleeping in his own bed. I mean, you weren't even in our home. Well, I'm I'm pretty sure I got the the month, and I know I got the month and the year. Yeah. Right. But it, it was like I was the hazy day. on the exact day. Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that, that was basically and what it was. Really I wanted was, to make sure. Yeah, he was trying to make sure. Hey, I've got a lot going on. I don't want to mess this up. These are important documents this is correct, right? I mean, that was his answer, or that was his question to me. And I just, you know, I use that as a way to attack him. You don't even know when our children's birthdays are. And so I I say that and I offer this as an example because I know that our listeners may very well hear something similar from their prodigals where it's like you're, you're doing the absolute best that you can you are struggling, you have a brain fog, you are crushed in spirit, literally, and your prodigal is using that, you know, against you. And so um, I just want to encourage those listeners, if this is happening to you, um, know that, you know, this is, this is kind of a prodigal response. Um, and it may be that you really are just trying the best that you can. Um, but don't be surprised by this. You know, again, back to the verse, don't be surprised if you are being attacked in these ways. Satan will use that to further his desire to destroy the family. Yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, I, th- I think that was partially what you used with your attorney as you were building your case against me. That oh, I was some absolutely. sort of horrible father because I, I couldn't re- remember that exact date. But you see, there, that's it right there. Uh, he doesn't deserve yes. to be around and, because and, he forgot. Right, yeah. and every single little infraction, you know, it didn't matter what I had done. Every single little thing that he did, I literally took note and wrote it down yeah. and shared with my attorney in hopes to, when we had this big trial, if he tried to do X, Y, and Z, 
I would bring up all of these infractions like, to build my case. Oh, yeah? Well, you forgot their birthday. <laughs> yeah. and okay, I mean, case closed. Yeah, like yeah. looking back on it, I mean, and, and certainly, you know, now God really did use that time to grow Tommy, uh, his love and desire uh, to be a great father. And he drew our children closer to him. And actually, I was the one that grew further and further from my children during that time. Well, that, 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 that attitude and what you were choosing to use against me, I mean, that was, uh, that was largely due to the condition of your heart, right. which I readily acknowledge I had produced and facilitated that environment, which gave birth to that mindset in you. N not to uh, get you off the hook because you're right. responsible for your own actions. Right. But, you know, I've always I always say this: the husband is responsible for the spiritual condition of the home, and I did not lead. Uh, nothing I did remotely looked like what true servant leadership should have looked like, and yeah. so you and know, I, I take we, responsibility for that. And we kind of just you know swapped positions. It's like. I kind of took on the behavior and the thought patterns and all of the things that Tommy had done previously in our marriage. I kind of took those on and used those as my ammunition. Oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to treat you like you treated me all these years. And I just kind of took his lines from him and used them against him. Um, clearly that, that wasn't, you know, biblical, but these are ways that practical ways, everyday life situation examples that Satan will use to destroy your family and we shouldn't be surprised by it. Right. Well, the last part of that passage there, uh, talked about rejoicing. We're told to rejoice and <laughs> some might be wondering, how can I rejoice in this situation? The verse tells us uh, why. What, what is that reason there? What gives us cause for rejoicing, Amy? Well, we should, you know, be glad because His glory is revealed. And I, I can tell you, God's glory. Now you can go two ways with this. You, you can be talking about when, when Christ returns and His glory is revealed, but His glory is also revealed in us mm -hmm. when we, as wayward word sinners, turn away from our wicked ways our thoughts, our desires, the things we, we do on a daily basis, and we humbly submit to the Father, and um, we just, we, we honor Him. And, you know, when, when I was transformed by His grace into a vessel that uh, sought to honor Him more so than I did to dishonor Him, that's when Christ was being glorified. His glory was being revealed through me, through my obedience. Mm -hmm. Again, this is not something I did in and of myself. It was the work of God being on display for everyone to see. And Amy saw that. And this, right. this glory that was being revealed, this transformative power of Christ, was something that was attractive to her. Right. And she desired to be closer towards us. And in biblical counseling, when couples are going through trouble, one of the things that is said that if you are both, uh, if, if you can envision a triangle and you're both on opposite sides, uh, that as you direct your hearts uh, and your intents and focus on Christ, that will draw you to a point at the top and in the middle where you come together. Right. And that's what was happening there. Yeah, and I mean, and I, I agree with that. I think, you know, seeing... God being glorified by your actions and that transformation that God did in your heart, that is what attracted me back to my husband. Um, and, and, you know, that's not to say, oh, you should, you know, pretend and, and do these things and you're going to win back, you know, your spouse. There's no pretending. Like I could, I knew I could see this was God at work in him. The Holy Spirit was working through him. Because there's no him. way I could have, yeah, pulled these things yeah, off on my own. Yeah, yeah. And um, but but it was it was very attractive, and it it just it made me realize what was important, 
and and also it made me realize all of the things that I had done wrong. I think that more than anything else brought me to my knees to see, Amy, it's not just Tommy. He's not the only one at fault for where your marriage is at. He is making the transformation. God is working through him, but you're not allowing me to work through you. Uh, and I mean, that's where I was at, where I wasn't open to the Holy Spirit working through me. I had completely shut God out at that point. And uh, I mean, that made me really, it, it made me realize, okay, you know, Tommy's put in the time, he's put in the work, um, he's allowed God to come into his life, and he's cooperating with the Holy Spirit to make changes and now it's time for me to do the same. And uh, I mean, I remember, you know, just being fully aware of all of the things that I needed to work on. And, um, you know, just confessing it and just being so, um, just so humbled at how Tommy continued to pursue me, even with the, the horrible treatment. Um, you know, that I had put him through. And so anyway, I, I think, you know, it, when we allow God to work in us, it will naturally, he will be glorified. And when we're being obedient, no matter what, you know, if people see it or they don't, every time you are obedient to Christ, he will be glorified. Mm -hmm. Well, let's continue with this discussion. And along the topics of how to survive the pain of divorce, I think we need to acknowledge uh, what this pain sort of looks like and, and how it's felt. So the question, when one experiences separation or divorce, what can we point to as the causes for our suffering? What are, what are some reasons here? Why, why, do, why do we suffer? Suffer? Well, I think, you know, one of the main reasons is, you know, feeling abandoned, mm -hmm. um, abandonment from, you know, from the spouse or the prodigal. Yeah. And, you know, when I know I, I thought a lot about our vows when this first happened to us and the promises we made, especially that part for better or for worse, till death do you part. And I, I felt like... Um, I sort of envisioned that uh, marriage certificate just going up in flames mm -hmm. and me having nothing left, or that it was worthless, Right. basically. Just, just complete abandonment. And some of you feel the same way, too. I mean, your, your spouse or former spouse has cut off all communication. Uh, they, they make themselves unreachable. Completely uh, unavailable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Abandonment for sure. Uh, some of the other causes, uh, shame and guilt. You mm -hmm. know, we might be feeling guilty. I know I felt extremely guilty, guilty and rightfully so for all the hurt and pain that I caused Amy. And had I not done that, uh, I don't think we would have been in the situation we were in. And uh, she was acting out because she was so hurt. Uh, and, of course, the, the condition of her heart uh, but yeah, I, I, I experienced a lot of that shame and, and guilt. And I think there for you, uh, you as well, Amy, even while you were pursuing oh, yeah. divorce, there yeah. was shame and guilt. Yeah, there was tons of shame mm -hmm. and guilt. And, um, I think also one that I really struggled with, uh, especially after I kind of, at, like after God brought us back together and I reflected on our time in the valley, this one right here was really hard for me, and that was seeing our children suffer. And I'll be really honest, I, I mean, and I've shared very openly in some of our, our past um, episodes that I was blinded by a lot of what our children were going through. Um, I think they were more open with Tommy because he allowed them to be, um, and 
he saw a lot of the the pain and hurt and I was just kind of callous towards that too and I, I didn't really see it fully until after God had restored our marriage and just reflecting on it like I can't talk about it too much because it gets me very very emotional but seeing our children suffer um, that I think that's a huge one when you can't you you know I, I think sometimes we think well my spouse can treat me this way but I they're not allowed. We're very protective of our children. Yeah, they're not right. allowed to do that to my children. And yeah, we're. I think parents in general are very protective of their children. So it's really painful to see your children suffer when really there's a, sometimes not a whole lot you can do. Mm. Well, our suffering is also caused by our loss of security. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you could have... Uh, lost access to your financial resources, uh, the home that you're living in. We've spoken to many who have had their entire lives upended. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they have to move. Uh, they have to rethink their entire system of finances and reorder their whole lives. They have to uh, find maybe a, a, a different job. Their schedule has to be and, uh, and changed. I mean, it's, yeah. and there, there's no stability there. Right. And, you know, we have security when we, when we sense stability. And if that's removed, uh, it, it's tough yeah. to really feel secure. And I think, you know, one of these that we've seen in talking with um, a lot of moms in particular, stay-at-home moms who they, you know, their job was to raise their children. And, I mean, you know, we've talked to several moms here recently that had been out of the workforce for eight, nine, 12 years. And then, you know, they're forced to try to find something when they haven't been in the workforce in a while. And that, that can just be really difficult, you know, trying to figure out childcare and where are you going to get a job? And I haven't had a resume in eight years. So you know, these are all, the, the loss of security is really, really big. I think that might be one of the number one that we, or number one reasons that we hear from people. Mm. Uh, last one I've mentioned here, I'm going to say it's the, quote, invis invisibility of God. What do you think that means, Amy? I think just seeing a complete lack of God, um, like in the other person is is that what you're no not not really it, it's more like god where are you, you you're oh, all yeah, these yeah. things are happening to me you're and supposed you're to me my, you, my like, help like are... god has abandoned right you almost. right mm -hmm. or yeah, you god's can't... silent right and you just don't mm -hmm. you're not hearing yeah. from him you're that's not what I'm seeing getting at. him okay mm -hmm. yeah uh and that's definitely something we hear from folks why would god let this happen mm -hmm. where where is he i've, I've been praying Nothing. I hear nothing. Right. And so we get that sense if we're not tuned in uh, to him and our hearts aren't right and we're not feasting on the word of God and have this intimate relationship with him, of course we're going to feel like he's not there. So we've said all these things, and uh, but what we really want to do in this episode is get at the root causes. So we pointed to things like abandonment, shame and guilt, seeing our children suffer, loss of security, God's invisibility as the causes for our suffering. But going beyond that, there is a root cause. And we want to examine that now. So what is at the very core of our suffering? Now listen carefully. As followers of Christ, our core beliefs and heart condition is based on our view of the nature of God. And it is this perspective that will shape our outlook and view on the circumstances that surround us. So in other words, based on how we view God, our emotions, our thoughts, and our attitudes, attitudes will adjust themselves accordingly. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's look at that first one, abandonment. And let's ask ourselves this question. Have we been abandoned by God? 
Amy? No, no, absolutely not. No, we have not. And a scripture says the complete opposite. Right. Read that scripture for us. Deuteronomy 31, 8. It is the Lord who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. Right. So no, we have not been abandoned. If we have confessed our sins, should we be feeling shame and guilt? Amy? Also no. No. 1 John 1, 9 if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if you have felt guilty about your role in the destruction of your marriage, but you have gone before the Lord, you have confessed your sin, he has forgiven you. Mm -hmm. You need no longer feel guilty over that. Mm -hmm. That should not be a root cause of your suffering anymore. Right. Okay. Should we hurt when others hurt? And then this goes to seeing hurt in our children, mm -hmm. Amy. Yeah, I mean, I, to this, I would say yes, mm -hmm. but we are in a position to also offer hope. Mm. Um, this goes along with Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm. And you know when... When I saw our children being hurt, I was able to minister to them because I had been hurt, but I knew how much Christ loved me and how he cared for me, and I was able to extend this same love mm -hmm. to my children. And so mm -hmm. it was sort of cyclical and in honestly, that sense. And honestly, it's such a good life. Even if, you know, I mean, all of our listeners I'm most likely are you know, in these fiery trials where they are suffering. But even when we're not suffering, I think it's so important to model this behavior to our children to help teach them and help them to learn that no matter where you are, God is there with you um, and he is a God of comfort. Mm. So along the lines of security... Do the material things that give us this sense of security really provide that comfort? <laughs> no. 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 Matthew six nineteen. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Mm -hmm. You know, and as God was shaping my heart and transforming me through our, our time in the valley, <laughs> I, I wasn't a big fan of living at that apartment, but to be perfectly honest with you, I, 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 I quit caring about the material things. Yeah. That, that didn't matter. <laughs> so long as I was fed and I was healthy, uh, I knew there was there was hope for our marriage because I was siding with Christ. Right. You know, and yeah. so I, I let go of those things that that will sometimes will occasionally hear. You, I know you'll hear this quite a bit in the uh, uh, in the secular world as divorces occur or separation, people start getting very very possess possessive of oh, their yeah. material What's things. Mine? What's yours? Oh my goodness! We've got to separate all of these mm. things and. They hang on to those things like they're actual people. Well, they are relationships. They're, uh, they're idolatrous relationships with a lot of the things that the they things, own. The things, right, you know? right. Um, and, you know, I, it's, it's funny because this has continued to be a trend for Tommy <laughs> as we are building this house. He's like, yeah, whatever. I don't really care because it's all just material stuff anyway. Um, and, I mean, while he's, you know, half-heartedly... You know, but there, there, there's, there's some, there's well, there's, some a, there's, there's some true truth to that. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that, that's really where I'm coming from. So right. as we build this, and Amy's very, um, she's very good to seek my counsel and approval over decisions that are being made in terms of the, the decor and, right. uh, and how, how things are built and made. And I appreciate that. And and I, I think it might be a little frustrating for her 
because I'm so carefree. <laughs> like, I'm like, whatever. I don't care. But it, it, it goes to my perspective on, you know, all, all this is going to pass away right. eventually, and it doesn't really amount to a hill of beans I know. right now. I, I know you want it to look nice, and I appreciate it. Well, and, that. you know, while we yeah. want it to look nice, really, I mean, we have seen this, and, and truly, I'm not just saying this because we're on the podcast, truly we have seen this home be a gift to us um, and, and not just to our family. Literally the plan that we chose, we chose it because it could house as many guests um, and, and host as many people as possible because we truly want to dedicate this home to the Lord um, and to be host, good hosts of our home to invite people who are hurting in um, and to, you know, use this as a ministry tool. Um, and so every time that we, you know, we, we pray over our home or, you know, I've had people come, you know, friends to write scripture on the walls um, and the, or not really the walls, but you know, the, the structure, the, the framing. The framing. Yeah. Um, each time we pray, we, we just pray that, we will continue to be grateful and that God will continue to use this home as a comfort to others and, and as a tool to invite people in so that we can show the love of Christ to every single person that comes into our home and to them, you know, for us to also share that this has been a gift from the Lord. Well, I think that's a good approach to most areas Mm-hmm. of our life right. and our possessions lord how how can how can this be used to further advance your, your kingdom, kingdom absolutely. or bring glory to you right, right? And, and understanding that you know as as vessels that belong to Christ we are merely uh, stewards or caretakers of the things he has blessed he has us given with us. they Correct. Are, he owns it right yeah so um, lastly here uh, going on the idea of god being invisible or we're not seeing him mm-hmm. uh, at times is God really missing an action during these trials? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Hebrews four fourteen through 16. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence... Draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. It's right there. Yeah, he is I, there. I love the scripture. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace. I, I mean, I've just always loved that scripture. And, and it shows us that we should have confidence in coming to the Lord, knowing that he is there that he has not only, he's not only listening, but he has been through it himself. So there should be no doubt. No, absolutely of his presence. not. Mm-mm. All right. Well, how does our view of God shape our outlook and perspective on our circumstances? So now we're, we're sort of flipping the coin here, and we're taking a look at what God really is. Right. So we're experiencing all these things, the, the, this heartache, this grief, this pain and suffering. And we may have had a view of God. Well, here's the reality. We're about to give it to you right now. First, first reality, he is the sustainer. Mm-hmm. Isaiah 40, 30 through 31. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What's the next one, Amy? The next one is he's a provider. Mm. And that verse um, reflected is Philippians 4.19. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ is our deliverer. Psalm 34.4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. How many of you are fearful right now? Mm, I would say a lot. A lot of us are. Mm -hmm. Take comfort, my friend. He is our deliverer. 
What's right. the next one, Amy? And the next one is, He is our friend. John 15, 15 says, I sought the Lord, and He answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Mm. He is your best friend during this time. The best friend you could ever have. Mm -hmm. He is our rock and our fortress. You know, you might be feeling that your world is crumbling. There's no foundation from which you can stand on and, and maybe pick up the pieces. Listen to this verse, Psalm 18, 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Mm. Next one, Amy. Also, strength and comfort. Psalm 28, 7 says, The Lord is my strength and my shield. In Him my heart trusts, and I am helped. My heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to Him. Mm. Lastly here, and this is, this is my favorite one, because without this we really have nothing. Right. He is our hope. 1 Peter 1, 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Mm. So after reorienting our minds and our hearts on the truth of Scripture, what are some practical measures we can take to help alleviate the physical and emotional pain and the damage they cause? And, and I want to bring these up because, of course, the most important thing is getting to the heart of the issue and sort of refocusing our minds and reorienting them in terms of our, our perspective on God, mm -hmm. understanding that truth. But, but beyond that, there There's are some, some real, there things. are some practical things that deal uh, in many cases with our physical suffering right. and what we're dealing with. What are yeah. some things here? I mean, I, I think that the, the and, first... And, and spiritual, so physical yes, and spiritual. Yes, I think the first one is honestly the most important. And when people contact us or mm -hmm. we are in communication with people, you know, that may be in the same situation that those of our listeners are in, this is the very first piece of advice that we give to them. And that is join a local congregation of a Bible-believing church. Yeah, I know it's one of the first questions that I ask. Are you a member, Are an you active a, mm -hmm. member of a Bible-believing congregation? Right. Now, Amy and I were uh, hmm, attenders of a Bible-believing church at the time we ran into our... Uh, <laughs> uh, and we use the word attenders very lightly. <laughs> when I say attender, that is when I felt guilty enough to go. Right. Or yeah. when I had bugged him like 5,000 times and he said, yes. Uh, but I mean, what would you say? I, I don't even know that we went once a month, maybe once a month. Mm. Maybe. Yeah. I'd, I'd be doing good if it were once a month. Yeah. 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 But so it, it's none of, none of get, these sermons were ever being retained. So No. And I mean, to, to truly be plugged in and find a congregation and and the most important thing it's not you know the music or or what the you know pastor wears on Sunday mornings I think the most important thing that you should look for is is it a bible believing church do their views align with what scripture is teaches? the gospel being preached right or is it a a sanitized uh, feel good type service that appeals to your emotions. Right. You know, and that might work for a time, but ultimately we need more. We need the truth of God's word because it pierces. That's what causes us to change and to grow. Mm -hmm. And if you're not getting that, <laughs> the church is doing, and the pastor uh, is doing you a disservice. Right. Uh, what's another thing? Maybe. Uh, I think, I mean, we're... You should know a little bit about yeah, this. Yeah, we're big believers in this. Seek out wise biblical counsel. Mm. A lot of times we want to hear what our itching ears want us to hear and not necessarily what we need to hear. But I think it's really important to find and seek out, you know, wise biblical counsel. Mm. 
Uh, we also need to take the necessary steps to ensure our physical needs are being met. Uh, this, uh, this has to do with you know, sleep, getting enough sleep at night. Mm -hmm. Are you exercising? What does your diet look like? Right. And, you know, that last one is kind of hard, especially if you're enduring financial hardships. You can't necessarily afford the quality of food uh, that you maybe enjoyed during your time together with your spouse right, right. because of the combined incomes. And so, you know, in, in those cases, I, I think you can still maintain a healthy diet. You just have to, I think, look a little harder and, and take advantage of the resources that are, are out there. Right. Yeah, I, and oh, many churches, ours in particular, we have a very robust um, ministry that caters to the needs of the community where they are, you know, going without food. Uh, we have a food pantry. Mm -hmm. uh, and so... We have a furniture ministry right. where, you know, a lot of times people that are going through a horrific divorce or separation and you know they don't have furniture like they finally they finally found a place to live but then they're moving without any furniture mm -hmm. um, we have a ministry that helps to provide that and there are many other you know churches um, or you know community uh, places in the community where you can find these types of things. And, you know, I would argue that you're not actually able to give your best if you are not, um, not, not, not preparing your body, but, um, maybe e equipping or e fueling, yeah, fueling yeah, your, your, your body with the, with the necessary good things that it needs right. and in order to allow you. Huge. Oh yeah. I mean, you've got to get your proper rest. And you, your exercise, these are all good because, uh, you know, if, if you're one of those who maybe only has your children on the weekends or every other week, you know, it can be exhausting mm -hmm. uh, taking them from place to place or, you know, trying to create these memories on the weekends where you're doing things you wouldn't normally do. That takes time and energy. Right. And if you're not I'm prepared, planning. right, to do that, you're going to be wiped and then you're going to come home and you're just going to want to sleep and your kids are still there with you. You know, and, you know, I, I can tell you that I'm sure uh, our, our boys would say that daddy rested quite a bit at the house. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, the, I say the spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. And I, I tried to do things with them uh, to make some memories and to, you know, further the bond between us. But there were times when I was just you're just wiped really, out. really tired. Right. Yeah. And right. so getting your, your proper rest, exercise and diet, that will all help yeah. uh, in that arena. Uh, consider church and community service opportunities. All right. These are some things that can help us take the focus off our pain and redirect them towards the needs of others. Right. And I've seen this one so often where people say, I just don't have anything to give or, you know, I'm already exhausted. And now, you know, these two guys are telling us that we should start looking at doing community service opportunities. But I think the point of is exactly what Tommy said is when you do these things, when you serve in some capacity, it takes the focus off of you and places that onto someone else. And also, I think that there's a lot of, there, there are so many benefits to serving others, not just to, you know, maybe redirect the focus, but also you're, you're able to bless someone else. And when you can serve someone, that does internally make you feel better about what you're doing and how you're contributing. And I mean, I think it just boosts well, your spirit. Well, you're, you're, you're blessed to have served someone else. Absolutely. The Lord gives you that blessing. Right. So, right. And but before you can even do that, that's why I mentioned those steps before with the with the sleep, the exercise, and the exactly. diet. Exactly. You're not going to be able to pursue any of those community service opportunities if you're if you're exhausted all the time. Right. right. But I, I mean, I do think you know this is one of those ones that we hear so often. Well, I just don't have anything to give. That's absolutely not true. Mm. Um, and, and God does empower all of us with gifts. 
and he can use our abilities, even if it's just to, you know, be a greeter in our church and open the door and say hello to people and, you know, show a smile and be friendly. Um, God can use you in some capacity. And so don't let the enemy make you believe that you have nothing to offer mm -hmm. or you have nothing to give. And lastly, but certainly not the least important, we definitely need to carve out time for Bible study and prayer. So as it relates to physical and emotional pain, the damage that is caused there, much of that can be alleviated if we are spending time in the Word and speaking to the Lord about right. our issues. And I mean, I think this one is so important and again, definitely not the last or the least. Uh, I think this one is extremely important because while you're praying and you're calling out to God, you know, how does He speak to us? He speaks to us through Scripture. So if we're not hearing from God or we feel like that He is silent, you know, oftentimes my question to people is, how often are you reading your Bible? How often are you spending time in God's Word? Because if you truly feel as if you're not hearing from Him, um, you know, I think it kind of goes back to what does our daily routine look like? Uh, and, and that's how He reveals Himself to us. That's how He speaks to us and communicates to us through, you know, through the Word of the Lord. Well, while we oftentimes are unable to prevent the storms that enter our lives, as Christians, we need to possess a kingdom perspective as to why we are visited by these fiery trials. Our view of God will determine how we handle the sometimes painful circumstances and trouble we face in this life. When walking through the valley of despair, remember God's word and His promises. Romans 5, 2-5 through Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him, we also have obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Well, listeners, now is the time in our show when we share prayer requests sent to us from our listening audience. Our hope in sharing these during our show is that many of you will commit to pray for these same individuals. Though the Lord wants to hear our prayers, and we know that prayer works. So let's all do our part in lifting up these requests to the Lord. To submit your request, contact us at prayer at purposedmarriage.org and be sure to put in the subject line on air prayer. Or you can go to the on air prayer page on our website purposedmarriage.org and fill out the form. Also want to mention this disclaimer that some of these red listener submissions have been slightly abbreviated for the sake of time and clarity. And I know we have several today, Amy, because I goofed last month and I overlooked a couple that had been sent. My apologies. We're going to do our best to get all these read today. Uh, Amy, you go ahead and start with the first. Okay, the first is from May. She says, Hi, I believe the Holy Spirit has led me to your YouTube channel. I found your channel while searching for the song Living Hope by Phil Wickham. My husband, who knew the Lord, left me nearly three years ago. Please pray that he will come back first to the Lord and then to me. In the meantime, pray that I will wait expectantly and patiently for God's perfect timing. Thanks. I am greatly encouraged by what you and Amy are doing. Thank you, May, for sharing that prayer request. Next one is from Kevin. His message reads, My wife and I are where you were, both with the same roles, almost the same situation, time frame, and mindsets. And I am now the standard going on two years. We are both believers and have not divorced and still live together with our three kids, but it has been mentioned and used as a weapon for me to change. 
we both have been controlling, manipulative, and selfish. My wife is currently seeing a fellow teacher at the Christian school where she teaches. Please pray that I can continue to allow God to work in me to change, and that since we are believers, He will work in us to stop running, believing the lies of, of evil, and turn back to the Lord. Thank you, Kevin, for sharing that. Next one, Amy. The next one comes from Michael. He says that he just went through mediation. Through all of this, I have stood for my marriage, even though my prodigal spouse abandoned the home and cut all contact with me and everyone in the family a year ago. I believe God is working to restore my marriage, but her hard-hearted, her hardened heart has been consumed with bitterness, anxiety, and deception. This morning, the Lord told me he would fight this battle. I was told by the mediator and my lawyer that the judge assigned the case would tell me to sell the house and call it a day, and she refused to even listen to a possible reconciliation or at least separation offer. She is done, but I do not believe God is. Please pray for my wife, Abby's heart. She has gone through so much pain in life, but is only it's only going to get worse at this rate. Please also pray for my stand. Most in my life are telling me to move on, but the Lord is telling me that he is has not had the last word yet. Mm. Thank you, Michael, for sharing. Next one is from Aaron. Uh, he says, Please pray for my marriage to be restored. My wife Kristen and I have been divorced since February 1st, 2022. She filed in June of 2021. We were married almost 15 years when we separated in February 21. We have two daughters, ages 13 and 12. She's begun seeing someone else and thinks that God has released her from our marriage and brought this new man into her life who is also divorced with children. Kristen was walking closely with the Lord and now she seems to have pulled away from all the people in her life that were helping her to do that. Pray that I continue to seek the Lord daily and keep my eyes focused on Him. Pray that the Lord draws Kristen back to Himself, which ultimately would bring our family back together. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aaron. The next request comes from Tim. He says, Please pray for my wife, Rachel, and I. We have three children, 16, 14, and 11. We have been separated for seven months. There have been several praiseworthy moments, as well as some fairly large setbacks. There have been... Or there has been much expression from my wife that she doesn't want a divorce. However, through this process, she has had much counsel from friends and family to support her proceeding to divorce. I would like to have our names added to the prayer list as we have begun the mediation process. God has been faithful through this journey. My prayer is that he will keep us from Satan and restore our hearts for his purposes. Thank you for having this outlet and community prayer. Mm. Thank you, Tim. Uh, this next one comes from C. It says, please pray for my husband's heart, so that my husband's heart softens, that he hears the Holy Spirit. He is unwilling to work towards reconciliation at this time. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's pray for hardened hearts and that they be changed by the power of Christ. Mm -hmm. Next one, Amy. This next one comes from Anthony. He says, My wife and I have been separated for four months and two weeks. It seems like it has been years. Both my wife and I love God and His loving Word. I'd like prayer that my marriage and passion be restored. My wife, Kelly, has shut off all contact with me. I have been following Christ so much all this time. I practically live in my prayer closet. I have owned up to my sins and the sins I made against God and God alone. Por pornography played a huge part and the lies to hide it made it much more made it much worse. Um, I love my wife Kelly with all my heart and I do believe that God can restore and even more so I would like 
prayers for God's will to be done in both of our lives. Thank you, Anthony, and for that transparency as well. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, this next one is from Siha. I'm currently separated from my wife about five months now, and she's pursuing divorce. We've been married three years and been together seven. There's been a lot of conflict for a while, more so surrounding the time she eventually left. I've always sought reconciliation and help from counselors, but she is resisting. I believe God wants me to keep standing, though it's been a time of great mental and emotional anguish. Please pray that the Lord heals us and works on both our hearts and for Him to remove the negative influences leading her down the wrong path. I've chosen to honor God by fighting for my marriage covenant, but also realize that I need to be prepared for whatever the outcome will be. My desire is restoration nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Siha. Mm. This next one comes from Monique. She says, After 26 years of marriage and right after his mom passed away, my husband left me. It's been over five months and we've taken several wonderful trips together to help our college kids move. I see that he's softening, but he is saying he doesn't want to reconcile. He may be, or he may be starting to date. Mm -hmm. I am standing for my marriage, praying and reading the Bible. Please pray for our family. Thank you, Monique. Next one. Amy, go ahead and read this next one, and I'll do the last one for us. Okay, this next one comes from, from Julian. Julian. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, I am in a separation with my wife. We have been married for 10 years, and she has initiated temporary separation ha and has become a prodigal. She has been deceived by the enemy into thinking she needs to focus time on her personal journey. I'm standing for a marriage or our marriage because I know what divorce is as a whole. I'm in such sorrow and sadness without my family, and I long for my wife, my son, and our family to be restored. My prayer requests are that her eyes and her heart would be open to God's wisdom and that her heart would be open to our family coming back together. I'm very lonely and struggle with not waking up with my wife and my son by my side. Pray for my family as well as my wife's heart, faith, and mind during this storm. Pray that our marriage will be restored. All glory to God. Thank you, Julian. This last one is from Neil. This message reads, My wife was the victim of a forced encounter at age 13 and has a past history of abusive men and relationships. For 11 years, I've done my best to be a good husband and father. Her dad passed unexpectedly in April of 2020 without any true reconciliation or healing between them. On September 28th of 2020, five days before our 10-year anniversary, she came out as gay, had a girlfriend, and left the marriage. The very first pastor I spoke with told me the hardest place for me to be is in the home, seeing and hearing what I will see and hear, but the best place for me to be is in the home, because when her world collapses around her, she will need the strong man of God to pick her up, Forgive her and love her and show her the way to the true healing only God can provide. 1 Corinthians 7.14 says, The unbelieving spouse is sanctified by the believing spouse, and the children are made holy. I cannot and will not turn my back on my wife's salvation or that of my kids, so I stand. She has a lawyer, and supposedly the paperwork is all ready for me to sign. I feel at peace signing like God is saying to me, give her what she thinks she wants and give her to me. This is the hardest, most painful thing I have ever experienced, but my wife and my family are worth fighting for. Amen. Indeed they are. You all pray for Neil and his family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer now. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day and for the opportunity we have to speak the truth of your word we are grateful for the hope we have in you and in the assurance that as followers of your Son, we are promised peace, fulfillment, and comfort in times of trial. 
Many in our listening audience have hurting hearts and are burdened by the pain they carry every day as a result of standing for you and their marriage covenant. In each of these circumstances, Lord, I ask that you bring healing and that your grace will flow freely so that we are able to endure the seasons of trial and suffering. Father, we ask that you work in a miraculous way so that the blind may be made to see, that the lost be led back into the fold, and that broken marriages be fully restored for your glory. Continue to strengthen us, God. Lift us up when we are down and help us focus our minds and hearts upon you so that we may possess a kingdom perspective. Help us to believe and to fully know in our heart of hearts that true joy only comes from you, mm -hmm. and it is upon the firm foundation of Christ that we place our ultimate faith and hope. As we close today, may you bless and help all those listening. Help us to honor you and always say and do. Go with us now, Lord. In Christ's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Purposed Marriage Podcast. We hope and pray it strengthens and further equips you to remain committed to your marriage no matter the condition or circumstances. For more information and links to resources from our ministry, be sure to follow us on social media and through our official blog at purposedmarriage.org. If you have questions about standing for your marriage, and desire to learn more about how to live biblically during times of trial and heartache, please reach out to us via email. The address is contact at purposedmarriage.org. Until our next broadcast, may God continue to strengthen and encourage as you pursue a Christ-honoring and purposed marriage.